Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the Unity uh, Vectors tutorial. And in this video I wanted to talk about magnitude. In the first video we covered an intro to vectors and how to add them and subtract them. Now in this one we're just going to focus on magnitude. It's going to be a pretty short video but I wanted to really explain what a magnitude of a vector is. So your recall from the last video is that we want to look now at vectors as arrows in space, starting from the origin and pointing to the point in space where that vector is. So we had a point at 5, 4, and 0. And we said that our vector would be starting from the origin and would be going to where that point is. Now, the magnitude of a vector is the length of this arrow. If we're working in 2D like we are here, you'll notice that we can do a triangle here from to where the point is and this triangle this is going to be our x component this is going to be our y component and if we use Pythagoras theorem we would get that x squared plus y squared equals our magnitude squared and then to get the magnitude we would get the square root of x y x squared plus y squared now in 3D, it works basically the same way, but we also add the z squared to it. And now would give us the magnitude or the length of our vector. So in Unity, this is mostly done for us. So for example, if we create a vector three, so vector three mvec, and let's say it's equal to a new vector three of five or 5.0, 4.0, and 0.0. .0. So this is our vector right here. We can say in start debug dot log mvec dot magnitude. And that will give us the magnitude of our vector. So it's going to do x squared plus y squared plus z squared, square root it, and that will give us the length of that vector. If we run this, we probably need to create an object attached to script to and then attach to it, and then run it. And as you can see, it's 6.4. That is the magnitude of our vector. Of course, if we pull up the calculator here and do uh, five squared plus four squared plus zero squared, which is zero, equals 41. And then if we do 41 and then get the square root of that, we get 6.403. So this is how you calculate the magnitude of a vector. So what can we use the magnitude for? Now, if we just, let's say, have a position uh, or uh, a position of an object. So let's say we have a cube uh, that's at, let's say 10, 12, and three. And we just create a public transform in our script call it mobj. If we do mobj.position.magnitude, that will give us the distance of the object from the origin. So if we attach our object to this and run it, it will just give us the distance of the object from the origin, which is 15.905. This We can't really do a whole lot with this. So what else can we do with it? You remember from last tutorial is that if we subtract the position of two objects, it gives us a vector from one object to the next. So if we have, let's say, a vector here and a vector there, and we subtract them, it will give us a vector from here to there. And you'll notice that the length of this vector is the distance between the two points. So if, let's say, let's create another object, let's say, object cube two and call this one object two. Now, if we, let's say, attach object two to our script and then just say uh, between brackets here, object one dot position, but what we want is 
from well for the magnitude it doesn't matter right if we have the op the arrow pointing this way or pointing this way the length of the arrow is the same so it doesn't matter if we subtract the first from the second or the second from the first all we're concerned about is an absolute value so just the length so we can say object minus m object two dot position dot magnitude and that will give us the distance between the two objects so if we run it did we put object one twice let's see here object one has the exact same position as object two so we probably so this gave us zero because they're on top of each other so let's move object two a bit further so let's move it somewhere around here and we run it now the distance between them is 18.35 now if we move it further again and run it again the distance is 33.4 so this is how you use a magnitude to find the distance between any two objects but there is also another functional functionality that unity has that is the square of the magnitude and the reason why this exists is that it's so much faster than just doing the magnitude so let's say over here we said that the magnitude is x squared plus y squared plus z squared and then we square root that but maybe we don't want to square root it because let's say we want to check if the object is five away from the other object so five distance away from the other object what we can do is say float distance equals 5.0 and then we can say distance equal times equals distance so we multiply distance by tw by itself so we square the distance and when we square the distance so 5 times 5 is 25 we can just compare it to the square magnitude directly and that would be so much faster to calculate than um, than doing um, the magnitude itself because it would eliminate the square root operation from our check so let's try this let's put the object closer so that let's debug.log both the magnitude so magnitude and debug.log the square of the magnitude and then let's move this object a bit closer so let's move it over here It is nine away, so let's get closer and move it even closer. There we go. So it's 2.7 away, but the square of the magnitude is 7.6. So now we can check to see if the magnitude is five, right? Let's debug the square of the distance. So debug.log distance now. So remember that uh, maybe to avoid any confusion, we can do float square distance equals distance times distance. So now we have the square of the distance. And then we can even just debug.log if the magnitude is less than the distance. And if the magnitude is squared, is less than the square distance and you'll see that both of these checks return the same thing if you compare the square of the magnitude to the square of the distance it would be the same as comparing the magnitude to the distance so if we run it they're both true if we move the object away so that six they're both false there won't be any instance where one is true and one is false. And this way you can, so it's 5.1, so it's 26, so they're both false. So to, to improve the performance of your game a little bit, it's much better to just square the distance that you want to check and check against the square of the magnitude rather than the magnitude. So I really hope that this helped. Um, this is pretty much it for magnitude. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.